all these physical skills. Now, it is possible, I mentioned, that I'm not giving a lot of traditional obedience cues usually when I'm doing this, right? I'm giving them a cue to direct their attention away from something and into me. And I go through my process of verbal, physical, leash, and potentially e-collar and leash, right? Depending on the dog and, and what the situation is. The e-collar has some advantages in that it's very easy to control intensity consistently, right? Leash inputs are a little harder that way, right? And so with clients sometimes, uh, if, I, if I think it warrants it with the dog, then the electronic collar isn't necessarily the biggest stick in our toolbox, right? There's a little bit of a misconception <laughs> there. The modern collar can be used quite subtly. And one of its advantages is that I can know exactly the input I'm putting on the dog. Sometimes I turn on the leash, I'm excited, I'm, st I'm stressed, I'm whatever, and sometimes I ink a little harder, sometimes it's a little too soft, and it's, there's a lot more variation in those physical skills. And we as trainers spend a lot of time learning to moderate physical inputs and control intensity, but we're not 100% consistent in that. The e-collar has that benefit too, right, in a sense. And so there's possible that I want that tool in my toolbox. I won't say that we will use it for every dog, but I kind of think about preparing. Another thing is that when I enter one of these behavior mod type leash reactivity situations, I'm going to right away plan to use all those tools. I'll plan to use a prong collar, I'll plan to use a knee collar, all those sorts of things. Whether or not I use them is a different story, but from day one, I'm going to talk to cl clients and say, these are tools that might be useful for us, right? I'm not saying for certain we're using them now, but I want to start to habituate and prepare to use them, right? And that means having my dog wear the collar uh, randomly uh, away from that, both types of collars. I'm going to go through that whole process of neutralizing and habituating the dog to the tool. I may do a little low level level setting to figure out where I'm going to be with this dog and their level of sensitivity to the tools, all those kinds of things. And then if I don't use it, I don't use it as I go forward. If I decide, you know what, this dog doesn't need it, I think we're fine without it, great. But I laid the groundwork and I didn't shortcut any of the introductions, right? When we use any of our tools in a knee jerk fashion, we're much more likely, or when we use them at the point at which somebody has a big problem, we tend to use them too quickly and we shortcut that process. We do this with our puppies, right? So if I'm starting with a puppy, if you come by the school, I'll have a puppy walking around at four months old with a prong collar and an e-collar on. I'm not using a prong collar and e-collar on my puppies, right? <laughs> They're just wearing them. Like I put them on them and off them and on them and off them at various times, right? And those come in. And for my personal dogs, they don't get their e-collar conditioning. They're usually between a year and a year and a half old and closer to a year and a half most of the time before I introduce that tool. But they've been wearing it since they were four or five months old, right? It's jewelry to them. It's background. I'm thinking, like, I might want this tool, right? And you won't every time. Great, fine. But you didn't shortcut anything. You didn't use anything in a knee-jerk way. But when somebody has a problem, they want to deal with it now, and you're going to tend to shortcut things. You're going to move through that stuff quickly, and we more frequently get superstitious associations, especially with the aversive tools, when you jam through that stuff. And the e-collar, because it's an unusual sensation for a dog, is very prone to creating superstitious associations. So we want to be really careful about its use in behavior mod and leash reactivity when the dog's focused on things. The dog has to be very familiar with that because the first time your dog feels electrical stimulation, it's like, what is that? It doesn't feel like anything else they've ever felt, right? And there's no physical movement connected to it. If I pull on a leash, the dog obviously knows that's coming from me, right? Because I'm on the other end of it and I moved in order to do it. But if I press a button, the dog feels a novel stimulation, and I don't necessarily do anything. So it feels like it's coming out of nowhere a little bit. And so dogs that are less fluent will much more likely associate that with something in the environment. If you enjoy our videos, we post our social media videos to our website, Learberg.com, a week or two before we post them to our YouTube channel. These early release videos can be found on the front page of our site or by going to the site and selecting video on demand from the toolbar and then select free videos. Thank you for watching.